add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. Tomorrow on ET, one-on-one -on -one with Gwyneth Paltrow talking her milestone birthday goals. It doesn't take much. I need you say <laughs> Plus, close the lock the door. Don't lock it. Uh-huh, that's me, our exclusive with ghost host Zach Bagans inside one of the most notorious murder mansions in all of California. This is level 10 location on the Ghost Adventures scale. I don't understand why you can. You know what I'm waiting for? You know what I'm waiting for? What? Come on with oh, please. Come on with That ain't on, happening. Why not? Before we go, check this out. This is the first look at Michael B. Jordan versus Jonathan Majors Woo. in Creed mm. 3. You think you made it? Try spin it. Happening now. A mother by her son's bedside in the hospital two weeks after he was shot in the head. Why she's losing faith that a suspect will ever be caught. This is some of the coolest air we have seen in six months around San Antonio. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be our low point. I'll tell you how cool and where in just a bit. And a local business that's run completely on girl power. How one woman-owned collective got its start. The News at 5 starts right now. And up first tonight on the News at 5, we begin with breaking news from the city's northeast side where crews are responding to a fire. Patty Santos is there live on the scene at Wide Drive. That's near Perrin Beidle and Wurzbach Parkway. Patty, do we know anything so far about this fire? Yeah, we do have some good news. His is that everyone that worked in these uh, businesses was able to make it out safely. Unfortunately, there's about 18 businesses that were impacted by this call. You can see some of that fire damage here in the front. This is the area where firefighters have been working. But here's a better look from Sky 12. Now, firefighters tell us what was really concerning for them during this fire was that uh, there's a little gust of wind right now that we have going on. They were afraid that this fire would spread to the neighboring businesses. Right now, they say about four out of those 18 businesses have some sort of smoke and water damage. But at this point, they're still trying to figure out what started this fire. We can tell you that most of the businesses here, they say, are manufacturing uh, some type. The one that you're seeing live right now, right here, uh, it looks like it's a fire, uh, excuse me, a a video and a security business next to a sealed coating supply business. We've seen a lot of the workers that were able to make it out here. Uh, of course, pretty sad about what happened to the business here, but uh, this fire was out in less than 20 minutes and uh, firefighters are going to continue to stay here right now because they want to make sure that uh, all of the fire is out inside. We're going to continue to stay here and bring you more as we get that. We'll send it back to you. Thank you so much, Patty. A teenager in Uvalde in jail this afternoon after allegedly threatening another shooting, this time at the high school. Lee Waldman is live outside the high school for us now. Lee, Uvalde police and DPS making that arrest, but that threat originally reported to the school. Yeah, Uvalde CISD contacted UPD, Uvalde Police Department and DPS to make a report or after they heard a report, reported on the school's Stop It app. It was a school shooting report. That app is an anonymous reporting application the school district is using, the city also utilizing that technology. According to a release from the district, a 16-year-old student made a threat on social media Monday night. UPD and DPS arrested the teen at their home and they admitted to threatening another juvenile. A UPD release states the teen is being charged with a felony terroristic threat. In an email to parents, the district writes, quote, we understand that this message may cause additional stress for some of you. However, we believe it is important to communicate these situations when they occur. We'll continue to work with the state and local law enforcement agencies to help keep our students and staff safe, unquote. Now, today was the first day back for students after the district's fall break, and many of the parents of students in this district say they're understandably shaken up. We'll have more on that tonight at 6, live in Uvalde. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. New at 5, a local woman praying for healing for her son, but also for new information about the person who shot him. It has been almost two weeks now since someone took aim at him, leaving him in a hospital fighting for his life. Katrina Weber tells us why his mother is losing faith that that shooter will be caught. 
Within minutes of arriving at the Connolly Apartments back on October 7th, San Antonio police knew things were serious for 27-year-old Tevin Wilson. Someone had shot him multiple times, steps from his home near Evers Road and Loop 410 around 2.30 in the morning. I was shaken. I was scared, not knowing how bad this was. Wendy Wilson got the bad news in a phone call later, then tracked down her son in critical condition at University Hospital. The only name I knew to call was Jesus. My son is fighting. This is horrific. Tevin, a father of three, remains in the hospital, still unable to talk. His mother says he was shot in his head, arm, and leg. Wilson says her priority throughout this whole ordeal has been caring for her son. She's barely left his side here at the hospital since the day he was shot. But also weighing on her mind is what is happening in terms of finding the person responsible. I'm angry. I'm mad. I don't understand. Why? Why? She says so far she has heard very little from investigators. Police told us they have no new leads. On the day of the shooting, they said Tevin's girlfriend found him after hearing gunshots outside their door. Somebody saw something. I mean, I'm, I'm just in disbelief to understand that nobody knows nothing. Wilson's main hope is that her son will heal soon, but she also prays for police to quickly solve this case. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A retired San Antonio police detective accused of pointing a gun at a man and assaulting him outside of a West Side home depot has now beaten the criminal charges against him. Prosecutors dismissing their aggravated assault case against John Schiller after the victim in the case did not show up for trial. Schiller was caught on cell phone cameras in September of 2020 pulling a gun on victim Christian Torres after accusing Torres of stealing a family member's phone. Torres was in contact with prosecutors, but when it came time to testify, he did not make himself available. Torres is currently described as a fugitive. He is wanted on a felony warrant for continuous sexual abuse of a child. Schiller was indicted in the gun case in July of 2021. He worked for San Antonio police from 1987 to 2019. San Antonio police say they are seeing a troubling spike in officer suicides. There have been six in just the past 20 months, which is more than half of all officer suicides dating back to 2008. Police Chief William McManus said it appears to be part of a larger trend and says that from what he's read, he believes it's driven in at least by part by something he calls the demonization of police. That, in addition to the whole defunding movement, um, you know, you had a lot of officers bailing out, uh, leaving the leaving the profession. Um, so, just based on what I'm what I've read and the research that I've done, that has a lot to do with it. Now, the department has created a wellness committee to look at officer wellness resources and how they can be improved. We'll have more on what the city is considering. That's coming up for you tonight on the news at six. Top in your consumer headline news tonight. If you have federal student loans, you might be eligible for thousands of dollars in relief. You could to qualify. Borrowers must meet certain requirements. Studentaid.gov now taking debt relief applications from people who don't want to pay off their federal student loans. Borrowers could receive up to $10,000 in debt cancellation, provided they make less than $125,000 a year. If they were a Pell Grant recipient, they could get as much as 20,000. This phase of the Biden administration's debt cancellation program is building onto a pandemic era pause in federal student loan repayment that is set to restart in January. The Department of Education has told us that if you apply for debt cancellation by the middle of November, you'll be able to get your student debt canceled before payments restart. Yeah. Now, the Department of Education says it will email at least 8 million borrowers who will be considered for debt relief, but don't need to apply because the department already has their income information. We do have more information about how you can apply over on KSAT.com. Meanwhile, while shelves are fuller than they used to be, many families with new babies in the U.S. are still having a lot of trouble finding baby formula. Data shows just 18% of powdered formula was out of stock the first week of October, compared to about 30% in July. But that is still higher than before the nationwide recall of baby formula back in February. 
According to a new survey, nearly a third of households with a baby younger than one said they had trouble finding formula over the course of one week in September. And more than 40% said they had only a week supply or less on hand. Take a look at your Tuesday evening commute out there with our traffic authority looking at uh, Transguide camera here at Loop 410 and Fredericksburg Road. One side moving pretty quickly, the other side a little backed up, but uh, no trouble to report out there right now. Adam. And what a day today, 57 earlier this morning than a high temperature of 72, both below average for this time of year. Actually, our high temperature 10 degrees below average for a change. We haven't had this kind of weather since April. That's about six months ago. Lakey right now at 67, Eagle Pass 66. Floresville checking in at 72 shirts about near 70 degrees and for the most part we're right around that 70 degree mark right now. New Braunfels at 71 this evening. Clear sky, calm wind, good radiational cooling. Temperatures falling off quickly, low humidity. By 10 o'clock we're at 58 degrees. Midnight we're already down to 54. I'll be back to talk about just how cool it's going to get in your neighborhood in just a bit and even some 30s out there likely tomorrow morning. We'll pinpoint it for you coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Now streaming a new episode of South Texas Crime Stories, hosts Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman diving into the so-called satanic panic hysteria that spread across the United States in the 80s and early 90s. You can scan this QR code on your screen right now, and it'll take you to that episode along with previous episodes of South Texas Crime Stories. Still ahead on the news at five, it's a storefront for women entrepreneurs. We'll introduce you to the young woman who started it all and tell you why she says it was started with a sticker. I'm Stephanie Jimenez, and here's a look at what we're working on for you for six o'clock. Parts of the justice system are broken when it comes to family violence cases. You've all heard about this. Now, survivors know it, their advocates know it, and so do the judges and county commissioners. And that's exactly why Commissioner's Court approved a massive assessment of the system. What survivors are now demanding be addressed in that review. 20 years ago, this really would have been unheard of. A billion dollar investment in San Antonio's east side? Yep. An old ice storage facility just east of downtown, now at the heart of what's being called a life science innovation district. Coming up at six, how Colabs is helping startup companies, many of them in the stem cell industry. All that and so much more tonight at six. Thank you, Stephania. You might not think a post-pandemic economy is the best time to start up a new small business. Well, certainly don't tell that to the young entrepreneur you are about to meet in this next story. She's opening her doors tomorrow to a shop that's all about empowering women. Our Marilyn Moore shares this small business story. Pink neon is the first sign this shop runs on girl power. And we have a bunch of different styles so that everyone can find something. It's the Alicia Collective Company, where owner Emily Howell sells her designs. Kind people are my kind of people. Um, this one's a really good seller. And she leases space to others who sell everything from stationery to scrunchies. My primary goal in setting up this store was to give the female um, small business owners a home and a place for them to be able to step their foot into retail. Like Leah Nanez, who bakes earrings made of clay in her kitchen oven. We even do like themed ones like the conchas, you know, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We love pan dulce, so we do like some conchas. And Gabrielle Richter, who launched her fashion boutique just as the pandemic hit. We had done one pop-up and then everything shut down, um, which was a little nerve-wracking. Sustainability is also important. For instance, this business sells toothpaste tablets, so no tube. This is a shampoo bar. It replaces three plastic bottles. The business is a bold step for Howell, who started making stickers as a hobby. It all started with a sticker. What was the sticker? It was a UTSA sticker, actually. Where she attends college, studying public health reflected in her products. And we have invest in your mental health. We have a lot of different, um, you know, self care type of designs. Howell is only 20 years old and already built her business one sticker and t-shirt at a time. Whenever I first started my business, I invested in a Cricut and an iPad. I did like made to order shirts in the beginning, did not have inventory, kept saving my profits and investing, saving my profits and investing. She's still investing this time in a sisterhood. 
Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Pretty neat. Let's take a live look outside with live cam Sky 12 high above the Alamo City on this beautiful, sunny, cool, very fall like. Tuesday, Adam. Yeah, finally feeling fall like across the Alamo City and uh, we're noticing it. You're going to notice it, especially the next couple of mornings. Let's get right to the details here. Tomorrow morning, 44 degrees, the low temperature in and around San Antonio, but even cooler in some outlying areas. I'll jump into those details and tell you how cool and where in just a bit. Thursday still in the 40s, 48 the morning low temperature, and then you see those mornings start to get a bit warmer by this weekend. We're well into the 60s. That's a result of uh, the humidity returning. So the next couple of mornings anticipate 40s. Here's the overall pattern. Let's talk about this. It's a pattern that we often see this time of year, but we haven't seen it in quite some time. It's, we're finally starting to see it this fall. Upper level low over the Great Lakes. It's where you see the blue colors, the cooler air being drawn southward from Canada. Meanwhile, a big bump, the big Blue H, the ridge, off to the west in the western U.S. And we're right in between the two, but close enough to that big upper level trough to pull in some of that cooler air here down into south and central Texas and have an impact on our weather, of course. Pleasanton now at 71, Kerrville 68, Del Rio officially at 65. Here in town, we're at 72 degrees right now. This is what you can expect tomorrow morning. Kerrville, 37. Fredericksburg, about 35. Canyon Lake at 40 degrees, Gonzales 41, Hondo 42 along the Rio Grande in the upper 40s. I think in and around 410 will be about 45 degrees, but you get outside of 410 and 1604 and closer to about 42 to 43. Stone Oak 43, Elmendorf 43, the morning temperature. Bernie likely to dip down to about 38 briefly tomorrow morning. And this is around 7 a.m. when we typically have our lowest temperature of the day. So at the bus stop, Jackets, long sleeves, or the hoodie sweatshirt, if that's what the kids prefer, have them ready to go the next couple of days. Now, by the afternoon, we're talking shorts and short sleeves, or at least short sleeves, with temperatures well into the 70s. And for the most part, I think we'll be in the mid-70s tomorrow afternoon. And then we get back into shorts and short sleeve weather by this weekend. So 74 tomorrow afternoon, and then by Thursday, we're at 82. Friday through the weekend, we're talking mid to upper 80s. So temperatures will be rebounding and it's not going to be feeling so fall like by this upcoming weekend. I do want to talk about our overall weather pattern. We did have some light showers far south of town earlier today and even down in the valley. That's all dissipating, moving out of here. We talked about the big upper level pattern, the big trough, that upper level dip in the flow over the Great Lakes. Of course, that's where things get stirred up and that's where you get the showers and thunderstorms. We're actually watching for our next chance of rain, the potential tropical development just south of Mexico in the eastern Pacific. There's a 90% chance this is going to turn into a tropical depression, maybe even tropical storm Roslyn over the next couple of days. And then it's likely to track to the northwest and then curve across Mexico and the remnants of it could actually make it here to south and central Texas by the early part of next week. There's that potential. So we could tap into some of that leftover moisture from that future tropical storm. And that would also join a cold front to give us the chance of some showers. Right now, it doesn't look like it would be as widespread as what we had just yesterday, but it's a shot. Monday, we're at 30%, Tuesday down to 20%. Of course, we'll be fine tuning uh, that forecast because these, this, this system hasn't even developed yet. It's hard to predict what a future system is going to do. We haven't even measured it. It hasn't even developed, doesn't even have a center of circulation. But once we get more information, once it develops, then we'll be able to update our rain chances from it. Here's a case at 12 hour forecast. Tomorrow, 7 a.m., 44 degrees. But then by 10 a.m., we're already up to 57. And then at the noon hour, 65. So yeah, cool start to the day, but by the afternoon, pleasant, comfortable, short sleeves. 74 will hit that temperature by 4 p.m. Nothing but sunshine all day long. Low humidity the rest of this week, but this weekend, dew points are back up a bit. You'll notice morning clouds, morning mugginess, and also a bit of a breeze coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that'll be noticeable with highs in the upper 80s and a little hit with temperatures next week with that Monday cold front, but not as drastic as what we're having now. All right, Adam, thank you so much.
All right, Greg, could this be the week we see the return of Dak Prescott? Well, from what we hear from everybody, including the team owner, he is determined to play. The question is, will he play? Will he be allowed to play? What is the risk reward factor in that? We'll talk to Jerry Jones about that. Also, when we come back, why is some of Kelvin Johnson's teammates wishing for a mute button? <laughs> Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys star quarterback Dak Prescott is determined to play this week with the Cowboys host the Detroit Lions at AT&T Stadium at noon. That's according to Cowboys owner Jerry Jones speaking on his weekly radio show in Dallas today. Prescott has been sidelined since his season opener when he fractured a bone in his thumb on his throwing hand. Since that time, Cooper Rush has been able to fill in nicely, supported by the Dallas D to win four out of the last five games. From my perspective, from what I can know and see, uh, I think he's going to get there. Uh, we uh, uh, feel like that uh, physically uh, he's at a position that the risk reward justifies him being out there uh, in terms of any reoccurrence of the injury. Uh, set that one off to the side. We not, don't have that to think about. So it's a question of him getting ready and he's going to be given every opportunity this week to get ready to go play. That impressive throwing session for the game against Philadelphia certainly raises all hopes. The San Antonio Spurs are now just one day away from making their 2022 debut in the NBA regular season when they host the Charlotte Hornets at the AT&T Center. With DeJounte Murray now in Atlanta, Keldon Johnson becomes the face of the franchise. His energy will help fuel this team. But at times, his teammates tell us they wish there was a mute button, and we found out he's no longer allowed to run the locker room sound system. Well, he used to have a little siren that goes off in the morning, like... Like in the locker room? I think we could do a book on KJ. <laughs> but nah, yeah. Uh, like I said, though, uh, for real, for real, the energy that he brings is, is, is contagious. That's the word I was looking for, and it, and it helps us out a lot. So um, just to be able to play like that, it's going to be able to help us. And, you know, we all got to feed off him, and we got to help him out, too, when he doesn't have him today. So. The, the siren thing is... The siren's gone. <laughs> Siren is out, gone. And their first game of the season will be against Charlotte Wednesday at 7 p.m. We begin our live coverage at 5 o'clock tomorrow. The American League Championship Series is slated to start tomorrow with Game 1 at 6.30 in Houston, even though the Astros still don't know who they're going to play just yet because Game 5 between the Yankees and the Guardians was delayed due to weather until today. Try and put yourself in as good of a position as you can. I'm sure whoever we play is going to try and win, too, obviously, but... Um, I mean, we just got to go out there and play hard baseball and, you know, try and win the series wherever it is. All right. And at last check, that uh, game five has just gone into the seventh inning with the Yankees leading five to one. Not looking good for my guardians, Greg. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. All right, tomorrow morning, this is what the map should look like. Comfort 36, Bulverde 39, Seguin and Converse about 41 in the morning. Same with Rio Medina. Then by the afternoon, we're into the 70s. So sweatshirt in the morning, short sleeves later on in the day, with nothing but sunshine all day long. 75 on the west side tomorrow, Floresville 73, and we think officially downtown about 74 for that morning temperature. Nothing but sunshine and another cool morning on Thursday at 48, but we'll be back in the 80s for the afternoon starting on Thursday with the return of some humidity by Saturday and Sunday. Not feeling fall like really this upcoming weekend, a little closer to 90 for highs. Thank you so much, Adam. We want to take a quick look outside 281 at Grayson. Traffic moving well. Pretty day out there. Thanks for watching. News at 5 World News. This is that.